Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are doing well and welcome to episode 13 of our how to build out this YouTube application series. Really excited to bring you guys this video today because we will be talking about UI collection views, one of my very favorite components of iOS and how to use them to our very full advantage. Now, why don't we go ahead and turn our attention to the simulator and talk about what we implemented last time in the last episode. So we have the simulator here and in the last episode, we were able to implement a menu bar up here that slides the bottom panel below. And the bottom panel here is just a very simple UI collection view. And upon sliding, the menu uh, reacts appropriately to wherever you are sliding uh, the collection view to. Now in today's video, we will be talking about how to actually implement these uh, video cells for each one of these feed tabs. For example, the account is blank, subscription has a separate uh, feed, trending has a separate feed, and home is the home feed. So the question of the day is kind of, how would we actually implement a vertical scroll inside of a horizontal scrolling uh, UI collection view like this? And you know, I'm going to show you guys exactly how to do that. So why don't we go ahead and shrink this similar to the bottom. And if you have not uh, watched the last episode, go ahead and click in the description below. Uh, there should be a link and make sure to get caught up first before starting today. Now let's get ready to rock and roll with this application here by opening up our Xcode project. I'm gonna go ahead and open up Home Controller. I'm gonna run the application to actually confirm that our app is where we kind of left off last time. So we have our menu bar and we have our collection view down below. And now we want to actually implement some of these cells that we previously had before we implemented this uh, slider paging collection view. And how do we do that? Well, it's actually quite simple. I know I say that a lot, but uh, it's actually pretty easy. And we will do that first by going to this view group, creating a new file, and we'll create a a Cocoa Touch class with a subclass of base cell. And this will be a feed cell here. And this feed cell represents each one of the sections inside of our collection view. So a feed cell, we'll have four of them, a blue one, a green one, and a gray one, and a purple one. So that's what a feed cell is. And what do we do with this feed cell? Well, if we go back to uh, home controller, inside of viewdit load, we call setup collection view here. And this method, registers uh, a UI collection view cell for this cell ID. So instead of using a collection view cell, we will use a, uh, we'll use a feed cell instead. So let's register a class of feed cell.self. See, self like that. And we we'll use a cell ID for the identifier. Now that we have this, we can run the application again and we'll see the exact same thing. But now we're using a feed cell instead of a standard uh, UI collection view cell. So still the same application, nothing has changed yet. And I want to actually comment out some code inside of cell for item at index path inside of home controller. So instead of changing the color of each one of those cells, I'm going to remove the color, run the application, and we'll see white cells. And going back to feed cell, I want to override this method called setup views perhaps call setup views in the super class as well. And remember setup views doesn't do very much. It just eliminates the need to override all of these init methods. So going back to feed cell, I want to actually set the background color to some kind of color. Now I'm going to just set it as brown color like this. And you don't have to type in the UI color if you don't want. If you know what it's called, you just specify dot whatever color. And now they're all brown like so. So now what that means is the home controller is correctly uh, returning these feed cells. So I can start rendering something in this feed cell here. Okay. And so each one of these brown cells represents a section of our app. And how do we get the behavior where each section has a horizontal scroll like this? And like I said earlier, it's actually pretty simple if you implement a uh, UI collection view inside one of these feed cells here. So let's go ahead and do that. And I will say let collection view equals UI collection view. 
So this is going to instantiate a new collection view inside of feed cell. And I will use a closure block and include a UI collection view inside with a constructor of frame and collection view layout. And this will just be a zero because we are using constraints to actually specify how large it is. And for this layout parameter, I will create this layout up here. My layout equals UI collection view flow layout. So I know a lot of you guys have seen this already. So let's just go through this quickly and return this collection view out and execute this closure block. And we'll get this collection view out here. So the next thing to do is inside of setup views, we'll add it as a sub view, add this collection view here, add some constraints with this horizontal format that spans left edge to right edge like so. And we'll just copy and paste that over and use the same for the vertical top and bottom. You notice how easy this is. And it's because we have this convenience method of adding in constraints and specifying all the views as V0, V1, V2, etc. Now we have our black collection view. And so I want to change it the background color to white. So let's say CV background color equals UI color of white like that. And we can run that. So you notice how you can specify UI color here, or you can just use the dot color. So both styles work. And here we go white cells. So how do we get these video cells back into our collection view? That is this white cell. Well, that's pretty simple as well, as long as we register our cell again. So we can say collection view, register class, and we can register back our video cells with video.self or video self dot, uh, video cell dot self. And this will be a cell ID, which we create Right above here, cell ID equals this string of cell ID. So this cell ID doesn't matter what it's called so much. It can be that, and it'll still render correctly. As long as it's a string, we are good to go. So now what do we do? Well, if we run the application, we don't get anything in our collection view because we have yet to implement the number of items in section method. So number of items is what we want to implement. But you notice how we don't see anything occurring inside of the auto completion because we have yet to implement UI collection view data source, uh, delegate and delegate flow layout like so. Now we use this just to implement the sizing of our cells inside of the collection view. So why don't we finish number of items in section right here and return a value of three. So let's get some extra spacing down here. Why don't we? And now I want to implement the cell for item at next path method. And this will just return some kind of cell. And what is this cell? Well, first we let cell equals collection view and we'll dequeue it from the uh, collection view like this with this cell ID string that we created above. And index path is passed into this method via that parameter. And we can now run this application and hopefully we'll see something in our cells, but we will not be seeing anything in here, unfortunately. And that's um, because of this common, uh, this kind of common, it's not exactly a mistake, but every time you put in a collection view inside of a new view, for example, a cell, you actually have to set the data source to self on the collection view first before any of these methods get called. So if I run this again, these methods <clears throat> actually do not get called. And you see how these uh, breakpoints don't get, uh, they don't get run into. And we will specify cv.datasource equals self and also cv.delegate equals self. However, this doesn't exactly work just yet unless we specify lazy var up here. This just means that we can access access self inside of this closure block. And it's really convenient so that everything is kind of neatly packed away inside of this closure up here. So running the application now, we'll see these breakpoints fire off right away when the app is up and running. So there we go, we get return of three, and this returns three times. So we get three of these cells in here. So this is currently what the collection view looks like. And we want to actually implement all of these functions or all these methods for the collection view that returns these cells, gives it 
uh, the video for each one of these individual cells and also returns the sizing of the cells. So we did all that previously inside of Home Controller here. And the last episode, we commented out all of these methods and I'm gonna just uncomment it, cut it, and paste it back into this <coughs> feed cell here. So pasting it over these number of items uh, number of items in section and cell for item index path methods that we just implemented. So I just paste it over those two function calls and I'm going to fix all of these errors right now. So remove override, <laughs> remove override, and we can also remove a view right here because we're in a cell itself. So we can get the entire cells frame and width just by accessing frame. And now we're almost there. So inside of number of items, we need to return the amount of videos inside of our home feed. So what that means is we need to actually go back to home controller and bring back this videos array parameter as well. Let's bring this back into feed cell. Why don't we put that up here? And also, why don't we go back to home controller again? And we actually need to fix this error where in the beginning of the loading of home controller, we call we call fetch videos right here, but we don't longer need this because fetch videos actually will occur by copying over this into feed cell and pasting it in here. We need to call fetch videos inside of this uh, feed cell instead of home controller. And let's see, here we go. So fetch videos goes right here. And then and now we can just remove this optional right here and this will simply call fetch videos. And upon completion from this API service call, we'll just reload the collection view. And let's see what we get inside of Home Controller now. So kind of magically, these cells appear and it actually gets all of these videos from this API call. And everything is being rendered pretty correctly or almost there right now. And that's kind of how all of this works. So all of, all of our cells now have a vertical scroll and the entire home controller has a horizontal scroll that allows us to swap between sections. So pretty nice and pretty easy, I think. And we need to actually fix one little error inside of home controller where the cells actually are being rendered a little too large. And I can see that from this scroll bar here and this is actually underneath the menu bar. And right here, the scroll bar kind of goes below the end of the collection view. And to fix this, we will first, let's see. I see these comments here, which I don't really like comments in my code. So let's just remove that. And I want to go down to size for item at index path, which is here. And instead of returning view frame height for this uh, entire cell of the section will actually subtract 50 from it. And this value 50 actually comes from the size of this menu bar right here. So the menu bar is 50. So if we subtract 50 from the height, we get the proper sizing for each one of these cells. And notice how the console, uh, there was a warning in there previously specifying the cells inaccurate sizing and now it's gone. So that's what fixed the, uh, the issue there. And now all of our cells are being correctly populated like that. Okay, and let's see, here we go. All right, not so bad, not so bad. Okay, so what do we want to do now? Well, in the last video, we implemented this menu bar slider, but there's one thing that I kind of left off in that video, and that is the behavior of sliding to one of these next sections and also changing the title up here from home. And this should be trending, or right, let's see, trending, and this is subscription, and this is account. In other words, when we swap from section to section like this, the title up there should also change to whatever it needs to be. So let's bring back here there, there, and there. So how do we go about changing the title of our application upon sliding over to the next section? Well, if we go back to home controller 
and we go to, let's see, scroll view. Let's see, where are you? Scroll view. Okay. First, I want to actually change the title inside of scroll view will end dragging. So inside of this method, every time we drag the collection view over, this method gets called. So let me just slide over here. And this method gets called because it's actually ending the dragging phase of our scroll view. And target content offset, we can use that to calculate the index of the menu. And in this case, index is this value of two. So we can actually just fix this or, or actually implement a title change inside of this method by introducing a set of titles up here. And we can call this home, let's see, trending. And what is the third title? Subscriptions. And finally, account for the last section. And in here we can simply, at the very end, we can use this index uh, parameter to say this. So we can access title label somehow. And the way to do this is to actually access navigation item title view like this. And if we just cast it down to a title or a UI label, so let's just call this title label equals navigation item dot title view as this UI label here. We're gonna say title label, let's see label dot text equals titles that array with this index right there. And let's see, can we do this? Uh, okay, if let is what we need. If let, and we have titles, let's see, titles. And the reason why this is not compiling is because index is a CG float in here. And we need to just downcast this as an int like so. Let's run this application now and see what this will give us. So as I scroll over, we have trending, we have subscriptions and we have home. So let's just add in a couple of spaces inside of this. Remember in the previous episode, we kind of changed the title text to actually have this home over here with two spaces. So why don't we add two spaces in here with string interpolation like this. So two quotes and we add two spaces, add in this guy right there, and we can just cut and paste that in there. So that'll give us this two space and then the variable of the title from this array. Let's drag that over, drag that over, and there we go. So that's what uh, the title change code looks like. And the other fix we want to actually talk about is when we click on one of these items here, we actually, we actually don't change the title. So what is the proper way of changing the title every time we click on one of these menu bar icons? Well, let's take a look at menu bar real fast. And every time we click on one of these menu bar icons, we actually execute this did select, uh, let's see, control six did select. Let me get to my method here. And we get did select executing this home controller, scroll to menu index, and let's just click on that method with command click. And we get this method call right here. So every time we click on the menu bar, we can also set the title label to this right here. So I'm gonna copy and paste that and paste that in here. So I don't really like copying and pasting. I'm gonna show you how to fix this in just a bit. And we can remove this in casting because index here will just be menu index and that's already an int. So if we run this code now inside of scroll to menu index, we will get a new title that says trending subscriptions and account. So not so bad. And that's kind of what we need to do to fix the menu. Now to fix this copy and paste code, which I really do not like seeing. And the reason I don't like seeing this copy and paste is there is a potential, potential bug that occurs if you change one of these title setters and you don't change the other one. In other words, what if one day my boss tells me I want to push the spacing of this title over by an additional two spaces. So I go into my code and I look at one of these guys and I say, okay, why don't we just add two spaces in there like I just did. And now the title looks kind of like that a little bit. Or what if we just add in, I wanna see if more spaces will be a little bit more obvious. 
And let's see what we have there. So why don't we add in a dash dash right there. So what if my boss tells me I want two dashes at the end of the, the title? And let's see, I think I need to drag it over. Yeah, so the dragging one actually executes this. And so if he wants me to make that change, I'll happily go in here and make that change. However, because I've copied and pasted this code, this change doesn't execute whenever I tap one of those menu icons. So we have a conflict or an inconsistency in our code right now. So tapping here makes the title bar look like that and dragging makes it look like that. So why don't we abstract this code out into a function itself? So I'm going to just cut, uh, just cut that and say private func set title for index like this. And this index will be an index of int type. I'll just paste that code in there. Take this index here, replace that. And here I'll just call set title for index with this menu index inside of here. So menu index goes there. And I'll call this method again inside of this method. So instead of this entire call, we'll just comment that out. And we'll just call this with the index of int index like that. <clears throat> so now we've removed the inconsistency in our code. So in other words, we can click on these icons right here and also drag this over and the title will look exactly the same kind of no matter what you do to the set title method right here. All right, that's pretty good. And one more thing. Uh, to clean up our code a little bit, you should always include the parameters of your properties inside of your classes above in the very top. This way, your code is not littered with uh, properties and constants all over. It's easier to keep track of all of them if they're all in one place like this. That's just my personal preference. You don't exactly have to follow that, but I like doing that with my code. It keeps it a little cleaner and tighter. All right, that about wraps it up for today. I really hope you guys are kind of seeing and understanding the power behind UI collection views. It's by far my favorite component inside of UI Kit. All right, also, if you guys enjoyed the content in today's video, make sure to hit that thumbs up button if you did, and also hit the subscribe to kind of support the channel. It really lets me know how much you guys are enjoying it. All right, in the next episode, we'll go over how to register multiple cells in our collection view to render out the trending and the subscription feed for our YouTube app. Really exciting stuff, so I hope you guys are looking forward to that. And finally, you can download the project by clicking the link on the screen. You can follow me on Twitter at Build That App. And also, if you're interested in learning more about iOS development, you can click on the following three links on the screen to go directly to the playlist on my YouTube channel. That's about it, guys. Keep on coding, and I'll see you next time.